Hi, I'm George. Welcome to Mad EV, where we offer you the first hand reviews of Chinese EVs and in depth analysis of the market and industry. Today, we start with NEO again, but in a different way. Soon after entering the German market, NEO's flagship sedan ET7 was awarded the Automobile Stars Golden Electric in the middle and upper class category defeating its strongest rival, Mercedes-Benz EQE. Then you might be wondering, can the newborn EV makers really give those 100 years old auto giants a bloody nose? And that's what we are going to talk about today. Simply put, yes, they can. Intelligent EV companies like Tesla and NIO, which have new technologies, new systems, and new business logic, are called the new force in China. And looking at the facts and the results, many innovations in EV making were indeed introduced by those new competitors. So why can these new forces do what many traditional car companies can't? We think the main reason lies in their four-stack development. The intelligent EV is not news to us, but the entire automobile supply chain has not become accustomed to developing them. For traditional gas-powered vehicles, the supply chain is formed by supplier, OEM, and distributors. But for intelligent EVs, a software-driven, hardware-integrated, and self-involving new product, data is everything. A series of processes and technologies related to data collection, transmission, storage, processing, and application have become the core productivity of intelligent EVs. To do this, a company needs to have an ENE structure, a vehicle operating system, an application software, and a data processing cloud. This is what we call four stack. Why do they have to do four stack development? Because the R&D logic of intelligent EV is different. Their supply chains have evolved to be built around data and have become a combination of multiple segments and so on. The threshold for building a car has also changed from the ability to integrate tens of thousands of components to the ability to wield billions lines of code. In the old days, companies would let suppliers compete with each other and purchase goods from them at the same time. But now, it's no longer seem suitable. Considering that the constantly involved software does not need warehouse or logistic, its logic and data may be completely different from supplier to supplier. As a result, it is better to have a dedicated, long-term partners as a software suppliers. But who might it be? The answer must be the car company itself. Since we now know what four-stack development is, let's see why New Force were able to realize it, while the traditional brand could not. In fact, many engineers in the new forces actually came from the traditional car companies. Despite the change in their employment, their professional competence should be about the same as before. So the reason why these companies fail to innovate cannot be lack of capability, but rather the limitations caused by the personnel and the organizational structure. As we mentioned earlier, the old structure is for the old supply chain which is no longer suitable for making intelligent EVs. However, for traditional car companies, it's near impossible to change its complex and rigid organizational structure. Let me give you an example. Look at the sentry mode on a Tesla. It's simple. Just let those cameras do additional surveillance job, and you are all set. But if you are a product manager of a traditional car company and want to do the same, you would immediately encounter obstacle. First of all, you have to decide which cameras to use, the ones for driving assist or the ones for 360 degree viewing, because it decides whether to go to the driver assistant department or the intelligent cockpit department. Then you have to work with the energy management department to adjust the power supply for the cameras. Additionally, customers will certainly want to monitor the feeds on their phones, so you need help from the software department for remote control. Next, 
you have to consult with legal advisor as monitoring the surroundings involve other people's privacy. Finally, you have to coordinate with the after-sales service for the vehicle consumes too much power and you have to explain it to the users. Moreover, this functionality is only possible if the vehicle itself has an ENE architecture that bridges all data barriers. If you can get all this done, congratulations! You will be rewarded with endless meeting, coordination, and prevarications. If a new force was to separate the R&D into three departments, just like what those dinosaurs did, the department responsible for digital intelligence will cause lots of trouble for the integration of software and hardware. Many of the features need to be developed by multiple departments together, making the actual progression difficult. Therefore, such an organizational structure must be unsuitable or even hinder the development of intelligent EVs. Let me tell you a story about Volkswagen. Herbert Diess wanted to carry out similar reforms to organizational structure. These are what he did. First, he spared no efforts trying to tell the management how powerful Tesla is, how dangerous Volkswagen is right now, and how badly it needs reform. Not afraid of offending the company, he even invited Elon Musk to give classes to all the management. Second, he created Carrier, a Volkswagen software company, to build a unified software platform for all Volkswagen cars around the world. Specifically, a unified E&E architecture, a vehicle operating system, and a dedicated cloud. Third, he hired software talents from all over the world. Just over a year after establishment, Carriad has already set up a subsidiary in China. The purpose is not only to do localized development and adaptation, but also help Volkswagen complete its global software development. Fourth, he tried to change the inherent workflow of the traditional car companies, so an integrated platform named PMT was built for development processes, methods, and tools. This is actually very similar to the decoupling of software and hardware that many new forces are doing. But, as we can see, this was taken out of the picture by the stubborn Volkswagen board. There are countless such examples. It is not that engineers are incapable of making innovations, but that the organization structure of the traditional car companies cannot keep up with the development of the intelligent EV. Of course, full-stack development does not mean to research and develop every detail, from start to finish. When it comes to the parts that need iteration, improvement, and follow-up, or the parts that affect the core experience, EV companies have to do all this themselves. But for the parts that rely on production skill to reduce costs, they still have to fund suppliers. Therefore, for intelligent EV companies, it's essential to have the ability to determine vehicle's architecture, design and verify key hardware and software, instead of doing everything themselves. No matter what, a car company will not turn into a software company. The innovation of the automobile industry is its integration, which has always been the same for more than a hundred years. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share it with your friends.